recently, I put together an all AMD workstation slash gaming setup, and this actually consists of two separate CPUs and one big GPU. Basically, I wanted the ability to share a GPU with other devices, and it just happens to be all AMD with this setup here, but you could go NVIDIA and Intel, AMD and Intel, you could have some AMD and NVIDIA, it's really up to you. But basically what I've got here is the Minisporum MSA2. It houses a 9955HX Ryzen CPU with 16 cores, 32 threads. It definitely delivers really great CPU performance, but the iGPU was really lacking. So what I did here was connect it over Oculink to the GT1 eGPU dock. This will do Oculink and USB 4 or Thunderbolt 4. And for the GPU, I opted to use the AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT. Before we move any further, I do want to mention that this video is sponsored by URCD Keys, and I have been using this site for quite some time when it comes to buying Windows 10 and Windows 11 keys. Over on Microsoft's site right now, you can see Windows 11 Pro is $199, and if you're building a low-cost budget gaming PC, adding an extra $200 on top just isn't going to work out for a lot of people. But luckily, over at URCD Key, you can pick up a Windows 11 Pro OEM key for as little as $23 by using code ETA. So what we're going to do here is add it to our cart. We'll use code ETA. Brought this down to $22.88. We'll submit our order. Once payment is complete, they're going to email you the code or you can go to your user profile on the site, copy the code. Now we can head over to the PC we want to activate. As you can see, we're running Windows 11. And from settings, we're going to go to activation settings. It's going to tell us that we're not active. We don't have a key installed. So we're just going to paste it right in here. Choose next. It's going to activate Windows for us, and we're ready to go. And remember, code ETA will give you 25% off other Microsoft products over on their website. So if you want to go with Office 2019, 2016 Pro, or if you just want to save a little more money and not pick up Windows 11, you can go with Windows 10 Pro, and that code is going to bring this down to $17. You're going to go through the same process, copy that code over, activate your PC. But yeah, like I mentioned, I've been using this site for a while. And whenever I build these PCs, I need to activate Windows. I usually pick up a key over here. Going with Windows 11 Pro, and it used to be Windows 10, but now we're up to this version. So if you're looking for cheap Windows keys for your next PC build, don't miss out on URCD Keys Halloween sale. Again, using code ETA will get you 25% off. Jumping back into the video, now aside from that MSA2 mini PC, I've also got the ROG Ally X, and this could be substituted for any handheld that supports Oculink or USB 4 Thunderbolt 4. But I use the ROG Ally X quite a lot, so I figured I'd just use this. And uh, we're going to start out here with the MSA2 connected to this 9070 XT. Okay, so jumping right in here, I wanted to give you a look at a few things before we get into testing. And as you can see, we've got that AMD Ryzen 9 9955HX, 16 cores, 32 threads. This is the Minisform Mini PC here. We've also got 32 gigs of DDR5 at 5600. We can do up to, I think, 96 in this. 32 on the uh, system memory for me is going to be more than enough. We could use the built-in iGPU, but I've actually totally disabled it because it's not going to be much help, especially since we have that AMD Radeon RX 9070 XT with 16 gigs of VRAM. Of course, this is connected over Oculink, so it's not going to be running at full speed like it would on a PCIe X16 slot in a tower, but... If you take a close look, you can see the card itself is rated at PCIe X16 5.0. It's only running at X4 4.0. And if I run this, yeah, that's all we're going to get out of it. But I'll tell you, with uh, the performance I've been seeing so far, it's not bad at all. And, you know, I've also got that swappability over to, let's say, a handheld with this setup just on the desk itself. A couple things here. You want to do some image generation, video generation. You can go with Comfy UI, you could go with A1111, it's up to you. What I've got here is a Muse, and it is optimized for AMD. So we can create images, we can create videos, there's a bunch of different things that we could do with this. There's AI filters. We can go to expert mode, get really deep into it, but you know, just to show it off real quick, we're in easy mode. And we can swap these parameters around. I'm just going to go with one video, but I want to do quality. We're going to do six seconds here. And let me get the task manager pulled up real quick so we can see exactly what's going on with the GPU while we're generating this video. 
We'll do Hello Kitty in a mech suit fighting a Godzilla-like monster in a city on fire. It's going to optimize the pipeline. We're doing 96 steps here. And since we're creating a video here, what this is basically going to do is just create several frames and then place them together for a nice little video. So we'll let this finish up. Right down here, we've got the elapsed time. You can see, yeah, it is running on that 9070 XT. So this did 144 frames, and we're almost done here. There we go. So quick little simple video, 152 seconds. And I'll tell you, I've tested this with this card in an x86 slot. Not much of a difference here, because basically when we're just doing, you know, image generation or video generation, it's all going to be done on the GPU. It doesn't have to take that signal and kind of send it back over. So you're basically going to get the same kind of performance using something like Oculink here while messing around with AI models, be it image generation or even something like uh, LM Studio. So I've been using the open AI here and I think I've already got it loaded. Yeah, we'll load a new chat. And I was using Open Gemma on my big PC, but this is pretty quick. We've got Open AI GPT OSS 28B. Pretty lightweight. I think it's like eight gigs, maybe 12 gigs for this one. Another model that I was using, again, on my main PC with this card was around 34 gigs. It was a bigger version of Gemma, but this is pretty quick here. So yeah, I mean, it's working out pretty decently over Oculink, but really the main reason I wanted to make something like this was for gaming. And of course, when we're running it uh, paired up with something like this 9955HX over Oculink, which we're going to get a much faster transfer rate doing it that way than we would over USB 4, we're probably going to see much better performance out of this system than we would with a handheld connected over USB 4 Thunderbolt. But the first thing I did here was run a couple benchmarks, and I want to show those off. The first one we have here has nothing to do with the GPU. It's Geekbench 6. I just wanted to get a feel for how this thing's going to perform on the CPU side with that 9955HX, and it's looking pretty good. Single core, 3,136. Multi, 18,191. And from the BIOS, you can set this up to 75 watts or auto. It does boost up, so in some cases I've seen it go up to around 96 watts. Next up, we've got some GPU benchmarks with 3D Mark. Steel Nomad, total score 6,595, and our FPS was 65.96. And the last one I ran here was Time Spy. We got a total score of 22,653, but these are synthetic benchmarks. And I'll tell you, with, uh, you know, Thunderbolt 4, USB 4, or even Oculink, we're not seeing a huge decrease in synthetic performance. Just to give you an idea, I recently tested a PC with the 9800X3D and a 9070XT. On that system, full tower PC, we got a total score of 26,333, and our graphics score was right there at 30,000. It was a different version of the 9070 XT, but these should come real close. We are losing a little bit here in the synthetic benchmark, but these were two totally different cards. They were both 9070 XTs from different manufacturers, so that could play a part in it. But now I want to move over to some real world performance with this setup here. First up, we've got Cyberpunk 2077, 1440p ultra settings with FSR 4 set to quality and FSR 4 looks absolutely amazing and it really does up the frame rate there. With no FSR enabled with this uh, 9070 XT over Oculink on this system, we're only seeing averages of around 78 FPS. With this, we've got an average of 92 FPS. Another game I was really interested in testing with this setup was Borderlands 4. 1440p, very high with FSR set to quality. Up in the top left hand corner, I've got all of our performance metrics listed. At the very bottom, we've got the TDP for that 9955HX, around 60 watts. If we move up a bit, you can see the TGP for that 9070 XT, even over Oculink, I've seen it hit up to 348 watts. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely pulling some power and that little setup there has an 800 watt power supply, I believe. So, I mean, we've got more than enough for this setup here. Another one I wanted to test out was Marvel Rivals, and this is a game that's really hit or miss on some of these AMD cards. Recently got that FSR4 upgrade, so uh, we can do that, and we're at 1440p Ultra, FSR4 set to quality. This is one that we'll be able to run over 120 FPS on average across the board at 1440p. Feels good and looks absolutely amazing. Going into this one, I wasn't sure what to expect over Oculink. 
but it's doing much better than I thought. Like we saw at the beginning of the video, I've also got that ROG Ally X on the table, and this was just really for USB 4 testing. The uh, eGPU dock that I have here does really well over USB 4 and Thunderbolt 4, but it has nothing on Oculink. And the main reason I'm not just going with the handheld for this setup is that throughput that Oculink can give us. So I wanted to run just one test here. We've got the Ally X USB 4 eGPU connected. We're using the same settings that we were over Oculink. And up in the top left hand corner, we've still got Afterburner running, 1440p Ultra FSR 4 set to quality. And in some cases, we'll see this dip down into the 40s. And yeah, it's just not a super stable connection like Oculink is. But one thing that can really help out, I mean, with a lot of systems, is frame generation. It's still not going to be perfect, and I kind of wish I was getting a bit more out of this. But with frame gen enabled on that 9070 connected over Oculink, it brings us up into the 140s, 150s. Now we can get over that 100 thresh mark. And you'll see it jump up 120, 140. It's really all over the place due to the USB 4 connection. So the big question here is, is this going to be worth doing? And the short answer is no. You can build a PC. You can get out probably cheaper building something with more power than this thing's going to put out. But if you've got a bunch of different devices that you want to test, I do think that having an eGPU on the desk can really help out. And of course, you don't need something like a 9070 XT. You can go with something lower end and still get good performance out of it. But with this setup here, again, I wanted to go all AMD with it. And I think uh, even over Oculink, this 9070 XT is an awesome performer. But if this is something that you definitely want to put together, I will leave links to everything I used in the description below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Like always, thanks for watching.